And now we come to John chapter 21, the final chapter of the Gospel of John, and with the word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and two other of his disciples. So that's seven, and Christ will return at the seventh trumpet. So already we have the number seven coming into it. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. The fish being a symbol of Christianity, and what is the moral of this story? You have to do it God's way under the leadership, the guidance, and the direction of your Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, John that is to say, said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. And remember what Christ told them in the beginning, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So see what this means in the spiritual sense. Gathering God's children into that many-membered body of Christ. By fishing. And how do you fish? patiently and gently and quietly and it's the same analogy as planting that seed of truth it's just a tiny little seed it's not a pound of seeds in one hole it's just a tiny little seed whenever you're actually planting the seed in a garden so the same analogy goes here just very gently and very simply plant a seed of truth as you can read of in Second Peter chapter 3, there are three world ages. Now there's a seed of truth right there. That's the one I like to use because once you grasp that, then you're on your way to understanding God's word. You have to understand that there are three world ages before you can understand any of it. None of it makes sense unless you know that fact, that there are three world ages, as you can read of in Second Peter chapter 3. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine, and none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead and if you remember Christ took five loaves of bread and two fishes and fed the multitude in another gospel and those are symbolic of the seven seals you have seven there five loaves two fishes and a fish being the symbol of Christianity what does that mean that there's a false Christ and there's a true Christ and that's what the seven seals are basically the seal of God in your forehead is to know the difference between the fake Christ and the true Christ in a nutshell that's what it is to have the seal of God in your forehead whereby you're not deceived into receiving that mark of the beast which is the deception so when they had dined Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon son of Jonas son of the dove lovest thou me more than these he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, son of the dove, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. 
He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? Because Peter denied Christ three times, which in the futurist sense, I believe, is symbolic of those three Christian nations that are plucked up by the roots whenever Satan appears as the false Christ. They're no longer Christian nations at that point in time, but they're assimilated into the one world religious system because on a national level, they become a bunch of Satan worshipers thinking that Satan is Jesus at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And you can read of that in Daniel chapter 7. That's what I think Peter denying Christ three times symbolizes. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. So notice he said lambs and sheep. And what are the lambs? The younger Christians. Don't overload them with information if they're new to Christianity. Cover the basics and don't go on what's known as the third level with them too much. Always pray for the Father to lead, guide, and direct you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me, which were the original words he first spoke to Peter, if you remember, and that's documented in the other Gospels. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, John, that is to say, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, till I return at the seventh trumpet, that is to say, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him he shall not die, but if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? And as you know, John will be taken to the Lord's Day from about 96 A.D. to the Lord's Day, the first day of the millennium. And that's when the book of Revelation was actually written, in the future. It's a book from the future. And people think God's Word is boring. It literally has a book from the future. And that's not the only one, Ezekiel as well. And so it is. Now how fascinating is that? How many books can you say that about that are literally from the future and so they are look at the things within the book of revelation that have already transpired how could anybody know that he was taken to the lord's day and he was shown what happened just before that during that five month period as well as many years prior to that leading up to it and so on and so forth going all the way back to the first world age so you're talking about time travel there and that's what john Saul was the Lord's return. So again, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? He did see the return of Christ, and he saw it from several different viewpoints. You have it in Revelation chapter 19. You have it in Revelation chapter 1. He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, the first day of the millennium. And you have it in Revelation chapter 6, as well as Revelation chapter 16, and Revelation 11 as well. Those all document the return of the true Christ from different viewpoints. So he was taken to the Lord's day, and then he was shown repeatedly different aspects of the return of the Lord, as well as the appearance of Antichrist just prior to that. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things, and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. And there you have it, the Gospel of John.